Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Dax Shepard eventually is going to hear this podcast and be like, why did you steal my opening? Uh, that's how much I listen to Armchair Expert that every time I start this podcast, my podcast that I have with my husband, uh, Humble Plug Common Ground Morning Show, uh, feel free to check out that podcast. Uh, I'm always like, welcome back. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing Dax Shepard. Uh, I'm not Dax Shepard uh, or Monica Padman. This is Rachel LaForce and this is my show. I'm hitting you with, uh, hitting you two times uh -uh, with uh, another tune up episode uh, mostly because my focus is so shot this week. I was uh, going to record a longer podcast on growth edges that'll be coming to you in the next couple of weeks. And then I have some really fun guests lined up. So uh, even though I am slowing down, the podcast is going to be uh, heating up this season. Uh, lots of super funny, super spiritual, uh, creative people that have been so kind to talk to me. So I cannot wait for you guys to hear those. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I was sharing in, um, actually by the time this comes out, I don't know if I've posted this reel yet or not, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we can all learn out of order, right? Of the frequency of chaos versus the frequency of peace. And what I mean by that is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you know, but, uh, the world feels like it's on fire and, uh, the narrative is like culture wars and everybody like we're so divided and look how it's so chaotic and we're all reposting, you know, the traumas of other people. And I know so much of it is the effort to make people aware. I understand that. And I think that there's power in that, but there's also something to be said for this collective, like, involvement, like we're almost like fanning the flame, you know, it's this like Munchausen system that's happening of, you know, we're just allowing ourselves to stay sick by this system that is designed to keep us sick. And, you know, I'm not somebody where I'm like, we're going to heal the world, you know, and I know there's a lot of people, especially in the spiritual community, and they're like, you know, they talk about the term new earth, and we're creating this new earth, and maybe we are. I'm here for it. I also believe that a lot of the quote unquote evil or darkness that exists in this world, I think so much of what being a human is, is experiencing pain, is experiencing the full spectrum of what it means to be alive in this plane of whatever this is, right? And that's why it's unfair and it's unjust. And, you know, I say all that also knowing that I am a, a, a highly privileged uh, white person with both of my white woman, uh, you know, with both of my parents and, you know, and all of these things. So I acknowledge that it's like maybe my narrative would be slightly different if, if that were not the case. I want to acknowledge that as well. But I, I still do feel as though you know, that, that is the experience here is, is to, you know, somewhat like how do we exist in the chaos and what do we do to heal our own selves in our own world so that we can begin to create a better place. I mean, I do believe that like so much of what I'm wanting to do is just wake people the fuck up. Like I, again, where it's like, I, I don't think that you need to, you know, have like a 17 step morning spiritual practice or become a spiritual healer or, you know, it's like heal other people's chakras. Like if you can, great. But it's like simply just waking up to the fact of like, you know, how much energy do we want to give Marjorie Taylor Greene for being like a sick and sad person? You know, where it's like all of these things that are happening are so obtruse and like just audacious and loud and it's like, why do we want to keep adding to the noise of chaos? Because that chaos isn't going anywhere. You know, it's like, and, and you know, healing our systematic structures of racism, misogyny, ageism, uh, fat phobia, uh, transphobia, you know, all of these things that we struggle with. I'm not saying like, you know, like, oh, just like, you know, tune out and tune in and like be on like the, you know, peace frequency. That's not what I'm saying, you know? It's like you can be in the world, but not of it. You know, how, how can you create this sense of, when I say peace frequency, so recently I did a body, mind, and soul workshop, which actually you can still grab the bundle on my website. You can download all the modules. 
Um, and we did a, uh, a body scan and when we got done, I was like, how's everybody feeling? And like, everyone was like super blissed out, which I loved. And they're like, man, I wish I could feel this way all the time. And I'm like, well, yeah, sure. I mean, we've got to get through our day and do things and whatever, but there is an element of that peace, that unbothered frequency that I just want to invite you to be like, you're welcome to sit in that anytime you want. Now that's also a practice to be able to access that place. I mean, I often like start my intention of like, that's the place I want to be in in the morning, but I'm a human. You know what I mean? Something goes wrong. Oh, we're not going to have this thing delivered or this thing's late or this client backed out. You know, my son's screaming. I've got my other son inside me. He's kicking the shit out of me. You know, like there's always something it's hard to be like, yeah, man, bliss. So I acknowledge that. But still being able to return back to that place, return back to that center. Because the world, you know, it is this machine now that is designed to fuel chaos. And it also makes a lot of fucking money off of you running into that chaos, running away from that chaos. I mean, so much of like the wellness industry is just developed because it's like, all of our cortisol levels are so high and our, you know, adrenals are so fucked. And like, you know, everybody's out here dry brushing like a mad person because we are so dialed into the chaos. And I understand that. I mean, it's hard to avoid, especially after two years where it's like we were stuck at home and, you know, for a myriad of reasons. And then, you know, it's just being fed to us over and over again. Again, it was like Munchausen syndrome, you know, where, where it's like, And then everybody had a different opinion about it because of course they do and it affects everybody differently. And then we're like, we're so divided now. And if you don't wear a mask, like, fuck you. And then if you do wear a mask, like you're a sheep. And, you know, where it's like, eventually we have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. How can you get into this place? I just imagine cool runnings for some reason. You know, how could you get into the toboggan of peace? Ah, toboggan of peace? Oh my God. Is she just a branding wizard? Guys, get into the toboggan of peace, okay? She can't say it, but it sounds good. How can you be in that space? And literally, I'm going to keep going with the cool runnings uh, analogy because it works. And like luge your way through it, you know, without losing your mind through it. Because it's going to happen either way. People are going to trigger you either way. People are going to challenge you either way. You know, people are going to treat you in the way that you don't deserve. And these systems have been built over time, over time. And as as peaceful and as powerful as love is, darkness is pretty fucking strong. And I don't say that to be defeatist, but it's like if you're, you know, it's like, but how do we get here or what do we do? It's like, because dark knows how powerful light is. So it doubles down. It's like a toddler who knows that you're saying no, they're going to get even louder. They're going to make, they're going to, you know, kick and scream even bigger because they know ultimately you're going to win. It's the same thing. So it's like, what can you do in your personal life and within your family, within your community to create more spaces, more toboggans of peace, if you will, feel free to share that with your family and friends to where you're creating safe spaces, quote unquote, from this chaos. What can you do? What does that look like for you? What does that feel like for you? Because yes, we still need to be involved. Yes, we still, you know, I believe need to vote. Yes, we still, you know, all of these things. But if we're still doing that where we're comparing and we're looking at each other and being like, oh, well, they're the crazy ones. It's like, I don't think any of us are immune. So I don't really have any answers for you uh, of your toboggan of peace. I just have been thinking about that a lot of like, you know, what are the things that I can do? Like one of, um, I don't remember his name. I'll put it in the show notes. I'm so pregnant. Um, But he's like a fifth generation, uh, like uh, farmer. And he was on uh, Joe Rogan recently. And he was just absolutely fascinating gentleman. And he owns this farm called White Oak Pastures, you know, and, uh, and Joe was like, well, how do you feel defeated when it's like there's all these other um, farm practices that are keeping us sick and, and aren't good for animals, um, but because of profits that people are going to keep doing it, unlike, you know, regenerative farming, like what you're doing. 
And this man just so wisely, and he was like, you know, I'm not interested in saving the world. I'm interested in saving white oak pastures. And I just thought that that was so brave of a thing to say and just insightful because also he doesn't say it quite like that. He's got a very, you know, um, one of those kind of Georgia, South Carolina accents. And he said, I'm not interested in saving the world. I'm interested in saving white oak pastures. Um, I would actually put the snippet in uh, this, but then Spotify will flag it. So we won't, but uh, just trust me that I nailed the impression. I know you feel it. Um, but I thought that that was so smart and I've really offered that to myself and other people, which is like, what, what does it mean to heal your world? Because if we're all doing that, like popcorn, it's going to light up so much faster. What are you doing to, you know, like get involved in your community? What are you doing to like work on your anti-racism? What are you doing um, like to empower your black community? What are you doing to fight ageism? What are you doing to fight you know, toxicity in Hollywood? Are you taking a job from somebody that you know you shouldn't be taking a job from? Like there's all of these small choices all the time that we make. So it's so easy for us to look at the machine and be like, oh, that's bad. That's chaotic. But it's like, again, we're participating in it. So I just encourage you as you go through the next couple of weeks, like what can you do to first just become mindful of that toboggan of peace for yourself? What does that mean? What does that feel like? And then slowly over time, it's like, okay, how can I offer that to the other people around me? How can I offer that in my family? How can I offer that in my community? Okay, how can I create spaces for things where it's like, I'm lighting shit motherfucking on fire? You know, like that's what we're here to do. It's like, I, I really believe that it's, you know, we talk about heaven and hell. It's like, I really believe we can either create hell on earth, or we can create heaven on earth. We've done a really good job of creating hell on earth in many ways for ourselves recently. So I know that if that can be done, the opposite can also be true. So I, I hope if you're out there and you're building different like community events or there's different rituals that you do or things like that, that are helping you, you know, be in this toboggan of peace, to be in that place, uh, you know, to fight the good fight, um, let me know. I, I, I want to connect with you guys. I want to know what it is that you're doing. I want to find out about these different organizations, uh, places that I can also contribute my time, my money, my resources uh, to contributing something so that we can, you know, heal the world that's not a bunch of celebrities singing into their phones. You heard it here first. It's under 15 minutes. This was a tune up, you guys. I hope wherever you are is where you are. <laughs> oh, I'm so pregnant. I love you guys so much. I'm so grateful for you listening. If you like this podcast, please share it with a friend. Leave me a review. You don't understand how much it helps. Uh, we're going to number one, no matter how long it takes. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Be good to yourself. Tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it.